Hello everyone, I know it has been a long time since I have posted a YouTube video that was not a stream video, but here we are today, back in Astroneer, to talk about some timing strategies. Now you might be thinking, okay, what's interesting about timing? Well, you know, we're kind of getting back to our roots of doing some circuitry projects, and I do actually have a pretty interesting use case that I've experienced that I'll kind of talk about a little bit later. Looks complicated now, but hopefully with this little explanation on clock cycles and infinite loops, you will better understand what I'm trying to do. So starting off very, very basic, the infinite loop in Astroneer is what I've pretty much used for all of my circuitry projects and design games as a so-called clock signal. And you can very easily establish one by using two delay repeaters attached to one another. So this delay repeater will be attached to this button, and this delay repeater will then be attached right back to the first one. Each of these are set to 10 cycles, which is pretty slow, but this is just so you can get a better visual of what's going on. I use this button solely to initiate the delay repeater. Um, no other reason for it being there. So after I first press this button to begin the cycle, I can very easily get rid of it. That's perfectly fine. And this light right over here also has a segment pin coming off of each of the delay repeaters just to show what the clock cycle would look like. So beginning the cycle, we see the first one goes for 10 ticks, the second one goes for 10 ticks, and they just repeat back and forth. Perfectly fine, nothing wrong with that. The only problem, however, is that in order to stop this cycle, you actually have to break a cable pin. So if I break that one off, that then stops the cycle and I can replace it once again and start it up whenever I'm ready. So it's, it's not very durable. It's really good for a single use case that you're okay with it running infinitely, but that's kind of about it. On the other hand, over here, we do have a different sort of clock cycle, one that is based on a single delay repeater, but instead a power switch, or sorry, a power sensor. So here we have power coming off of the QT RTG, and we have a double power switch. And the reason that this is the case is because the first power switch can act as sort of an enable. When this is on, we actually allow the infinite loop to run, and when we close this off, we stop the infinite loop. And this has been very, very useful for the games that I've needed to make that only have a clock cycle that runs at certain points in time, not infinitely. Other than that, we have this power sensor on power gained mode. So when power flows through the channel, again, these acting as AND gates when we have it enabled and we want to take a new clock cycle, we will close off the power switch. So we're cutting off power to the power sensor and we are then triggering our delay repeater. So after again, 10 ticks, we will then reopen this power switch and therefore creating our infinite loop. We'll close it with the power sensor, we'll reopen it after 10 ticks with the delay repeater and that sends another pulse through the cycle. At the same time, this light is being turned on by the delay repeater, once again showing you how the clock cycle ticks. This time, instead of getting sort of anti-phase, so one for the first segment, one for the second part of the clock cycle, we're only getting one tick for the entire clock cycle. So this pin is responsible for turning the light on and off. It's not as powerful as some of the other designs, but you can very easily add in multiple delay repeaters here so that you get multiple signals out and you can do a two stage clock, a three stage clock, four stage clock, however many stages you want before you then close or reopen this power switch. That's entirely up to you. And as I said, the benefit is I can very easily turn this power switch off when I'm done. It will finish up the clock cycle it is currently on and then everything has stopped moving. Now, the reason we are talking about clock cycles today is because there's a very particular use case that I have experienced during the creation of Snake. So this is the whole build of Snake. It's not complete yet, so it's still a work in progress. But this little area right here is responsible for generating new pieces of food. So in Snake, as you eat food, your snake grows longer and you have to avoid running into your tail or running out of bounds of the map. And when you eat a piece of food, a new one is generated. And that's what this handles here. So up top, I have a five tick cycle delay repeater loop. So this is every five ticks, it transitions to the next one, it goes back to the beginning. And this one is on three ticks. This one handles the columns and this one handles the row. And when I request a piece of food, the column and the row channel intersect and wherever the intersection is, is where a new piece of food is placed. And the reason these are not the same ticks, uh, cycle ticks, is because if they were both five or both three, 
it would just be the same diagonal movement every single time and there would be no randomness. And essentially when I request a piece of food, I was experiencing an issue where if I requested it just on the edge of a clock, of a clock cycle here, it would generate a piece of food, transition to the next one and generate a second piece of food. And that is not what I want. That is incorrect behavior. So I had to come up with a pretty unique way to handle that, which is going right here. And I will explain it with a much simpler model that I have built out here. So what I have is I have a button repeater here that just starts everything and a button repeater here that also starts everything for the rows. So these guys are basically just the initializers. Here I have the infinite loop of delay repeaters that are all on 25 ticks a piece and then an infinite loop here that are all on 22 ticks a piece. Once again, the exact same, but just slowed down so you can actually see what's going on. And here is the actual mechanism that is used to generate an item. So over here, we have a first power switch and then two following. The first power switch is only tied to this button repeater. So this is my call. So when I press this button, this will you know generate whether we want a piece of food or not. Um, and then these two right here are tied to infinite loops, which I'll get back to. But essentially this is a three input AND gate where we have to have three conditions. We want to have a piece of food. We want to be able to place it based on the column and we want to be able to place it based on the row. And if that is correct, then this power sensor on power gained mode will toggle the state of the work light just to indicate that we actually placed something. So what is actually happening with these delay repeaters? So these two here are the actual infinite loop. So this delay repeater will trigger this delay repeater and then this one goes back and triggers the first one. And it's the exact same for this two. These two triggers the first one and then this one goes back and triggers this guy. Now these also trigger these power switches. So these power switches are currently open and that's a specific reason just due to how this cycle works. But before we actually trigger the infinite loop, this button repeater is going to add a delay of 10 ticks. So when we press this, this is again on 25 ticks. After 10, we will then begin this infinite loop. So that means that this cycle will have 15 ticks remaining before it transitions to the next one. This guy will wait 10 ticks. So this goes down to five before it closes this switch off. And then this one waits 15. So because this one gets down to five ticks, we close this switch off. It then transitions to the next delay repeater before we then finish up the 15 ticks. So because this was at five and this was at 15, this one will go down to 25 and then 10 remaining. It will take it to 15. We will then open this switch back up and then trigger this next delay repeater. So this switch will be open for 10 ticks until we close it when this is at five. So essentially what we're doing is when this is about to transition, we close this switch off for a short period of time and then reopen it after we know for a fact it has already transitioned to the next delay repeater. And that is all based on timing. So because these are a 25 tick loop and each of these are on 25 ticks, we will never get out of sync. We will always make sure that right before we transition, we will close this switch off so we do not accidentally call for an item on transition and then we will open back up after a short period of time has elapsed. Now the same happens for these guys right here. So these are on 10 and 12, and that is because this is a 22 cycle. So this guy right here, again, instead of waiting 10, it just waits five to delay uh, a little bit so that we don't automatically transition at the same time as the delay repeater. So five seconds in, this will be at 17 ticks, after 12 ticks, we will close this off when this is at five ticks. And then we will open back up after 10 ticks have passed when we reopen and this will be at 17. So again, the explanation is a little bit confusing just to go through verbally. So let's take a little bit of a look at as to how this intentionally functions. So now that I've started this up, this is going to wait for 25 ticks. And so as you see, 25 ticks pass and it transitions to the next one. Right as it's about to transition, we close this off and we open it back up for a little bit of time. Right before it transitions, we close this off and open it back up. Close off, open it back up. It's about to transition, we close it off and we open it back up again. 
So again, we're just following the same pattern of closing off before transition and opening back up after we know enough time has established that we are safe from that issue that I've explained. And just to clean things up again, now that we have started everything up, these will run infinitely and we can remove the actual startup circuitry. So I'll run this one as well now. So this one was on five ticks. So we open it back up after it's transitioned, close it off just before it does. And there we go. We will no longer ever have the same issue that we will generate something on the clock transition. So what happens when we call for an item in between a transition period? So I'm gonna wait for one of those to close. I call it, this stays open until we get a favorable state where there are no transitions happening. And that looked like it took a long time to generate an item. And it was probably maybe anywhere between 15, 10 to 15 ticks or so. And that's just because of the nature of when we called for it. So we wait for both of them to be open and then we transition. In actuality, I'm running these ticks much, much faster. So it might look like almost anything is happening. It's just because again, it's going super, super quick, but it is really fast and really efficient at higher speeds. So these guys are only at like two or three ticks. So that one's at two, this one's at three, because that's for the five cycle one. And then this one should be at like one. And then this one's at two for the three cycle one. So you can really maximize how fast you're going. Just in this instance, to make it a little bit easier to see, we did kind of have to slow it down a little bit. But that's kind of all I really have for this video. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about infinite loops, just because I haven't done a video on those before and just some interesting ways on doing those. But those aren't really that special. There's not a lot to talk about until I ran into this particular use case. So I found it a little bit interesting to try to solve this problem. And it did take a little bit of finagling to actually make sure it worked right. But it was kind of unique. So hopefully you also thought it was an interesting, interesting problem. And you can see an actual real application where I had to use it to make Snake work properly. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, don't forget to subscribe and or follow Twitch if you are interested in more live content because I have been streaming more on Twitch, but not as much uh, YouTube video content has been created. So again, thank you all for watching. Have a good rest of your day, evening and or night, and we'll see you all very soon.